Greetings, friends. Welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Lent. We offer a special welcome to those who are watching this service online. Please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of life and faith, you are welcome here. Here are today's announcements. Lenten devotionals are available in the narthex for those of us joining us online. If you would like a copy of the Lenten devotional sent to you, email madia at info at firstchurchevanston.org. We are excited to welcome the chancel choir back this morning. They will be singing the anthem later in the service. We want to say a special word of thanks to Susan Katzbach, who has been our guest organist for the past four weeks. We are very grateful to her for sharing her gift of music. At the conclusion of the service, the quartet will sing the prayer for Ukraine. This song is sung at the close of many Ukrainian worship services. Today we join our prayer with theirs. At this time, Lynn Page will share a moment for mission. Good morning. The mission board urges you to refer to the first two announcement entries in today's bulletin, which you can also see under Compassion in your Friday newsletter. First, the Ukraine entry contains ways that we can help, pray, and donate to the people of Ukraine through the UCC. The second entry gives details about how we can help the Evanston clients of Connections and the YWCA with donations of toiletries and cleaning products beginning the weekend of March 12th and 13th. So we're going to be open for you to do it on Saturdays and Sundays for the month beginning then. There's also a reference to this donation drive um, mentioned in your newsletter as restoring our system pre-pandemic of spring toiletries drives and fall diaper drives. The Mission Board thanks you in advance for your generosity in aid of the people of Ukraine and for your donations to help our local friends and neighbors as well. Thank you. Let us be the church with thankful hearts as we worship God together. Please stand as you are able, and join me in our responsive call to worship. We may be entering this season arid, dry from pain and injustice, and yet God is still hydrating our spirits. We may be wandering, feeling as if we have no direction, and yet God is guiding us in the wilderness. We may be fearful, wondering what comes next. And yet, God is surrounding us with peace. We may begin our Lenten journey spiritually arid, aimless, and anxious. But the spirit of strength will never be lost.
Let us pray. We gather to worship, O God, under the cross, the shadow of the cross, sign of human shame and divine wisdom. Like Jesus, we would follow faithfully in your way. Like Jesus, we would live to you and die to you. We are your people. We belong to you. We offer you our worship and our lives. May your name be glorified in your church as we are open to your presence today. Through Jesus the Christ, amen. In every age, prophets and apostles have come to call the people of God to repentance and newness of life. We too are called to admit our sin and to commit ourselves anew to follow God's way. Let us pray. Gracious God, your love brings light to lead, light to darkened minds, strength to weak wills. Help us to believe and trust that no wrong we have done, no good we have failed to do, is too great for your, you to pardon through the merits of Jesus, your Son. Friends, do not fear. I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Your faith has made you free. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is passed away. Behold, the new has come. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Okay, ah, that's better. Hello to all the young people and all of you who are young at heart. And a special welcome and hello to all of you joining us online. Yesterday, something exciting happened. It was 65 degrees, right? Did you get outside? And I also saw my very first snowdrop flower. Those are some of the very first flowers that pop up, little white buds, and I saw some, and I knew that yes, spring is going to come even to Chicago. <laughs> Last week, we also began the season of Lent, and Lent is a word that means springtime. And it's the 40 days plus Sundays leading up to the mystery and joy of Easter. Lent is also like a spiritual springtime, a time when we practice again ways to better follow the ways of Jesus, the way of love. Just like in springtime, you might pump up your bicycle tires and practice again how to balance on bikes or rollerblades or skateboards, Lent is a time where we also practice different ways to feel closer to God. One way we can feel closer to God is through prayer. It's a way that we can talk to God, to share our worries and concerns, celebrate good times, and especially to thank God for all that we have. In our Old Testament story today, the people are reminded to say thank you for the very earth and the land that they live on because they had been immigrants searching for a place to live where they can be free from oppression. You may have heard about the people from Ukraine 
who are leaving their homes right now to find a safe space to stay in other countries. And people in those other countries are helping. They're welcoming people into their homes, setting up shelter, and sharing things that they have. And people from here have been sharing money and things that people need in times of trial. There are also people looking for safety from war or oppression in Afghanistan, Haiti, Syria, Yemen, Ethiopia, Honduras, Nicaragua, and many places in the world. We can help with our prayers, with money we share or items we donate, welcoming new students into our classrooms or new neighbors as a friend. The land we live and worship on is the ancestral land of the Council of Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Odawa people, as well as the Miami, Menominee, and Ho-Chunk nations. This very land with the first signs of springtime, with snow stops budding, and the first green shoots of daffodils that God has given us all. This season of Lent, let's give thanks for this earth, for safety, for peace. And let's practice finding new ways to thank God through our prayers of thanks, as well as through our actions of love and caring for those in times of need. Now let's practice together sharing a prayer. Dear God of hope, thank you for hopeful signs of springtime and this beautiful earth you've given to us. Help us to remember all of those looking for peace, safety, love, and a place to rest. Help us to be signs of hope for one another by caring for each other during difficult times. Amen. Let's share the peace of God with one another, saying, Peace be with you.
A reading of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 1 through 11. The people cried to the Lord God of their ancestors, and God delivered them. Listen for God to speak to you through these words of Holy Scripture. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land and that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A, wander, a wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground to you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Our gospel reading for today is Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. For 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus is tempted by the devil. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, and it will be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him, 
upon, until an opportune time. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, holy eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, and holy abiding presence. Amen. The season of Lent begins in the wilderness, in the desert. The wilderness is a place of wandering. Wandering toward what? It is a place of introspection, taking stock of one's life and one's calling. The wilderness is prelude, the place we necessarily pass through on our way to fullness of life. The Eastern Orthodox theologian Alexander Schmemann says that the church's Peculiar practices in this season are meant to help us see, feel, and experience what he calls the bright sadness of Lent, which is Lent's true message and gift. There is a quiet sadness which permeates this season, the special obligations and disciplines the drabness and the silences, the withdrawal from the noise and frenzy of our ordinary days and nights, the solemn contemplation of our failings and our mortality. But as we immerse ourselves in the sadness of Lent, we also begin to perceive a brightness that is too often obscured by our everyday and every night anxiety, our compulsiveness, our anger, our resentments, our greed. All those things that seemed so important to us, that preoccupied us, that had become part of us, all those things fade as we perceive the brightness of another world. The purpose of Lent is not to impose strange obligations or elicit a few tears of remorse. The purpose of Lent is to bring us into the presence of God. The sad brightness of Lent is the sadness of our exile, the sadness of what we have made of our lives, and the brightness of God's presence and the forgiveness the joy of returning home, a joy which permeates this entire season. The story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness offers some helpful insights into our struggle with illusions, illusions that seduce us and steal life from us. Jesus is still wet in the waters of John's baptism in the Jordan River, when the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness. There he is tempted by the devil. Luke tells the story so compactly that we might think the temptations were suggested quickly and then quickly overcome. Jesus appears to deal with all these temptations without really breaking a sweat. He has all the answers. Temptations seem to be no big deal if you are the Messiah. But Luke says that Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days 
which is the biblical way of saying for a very long time. And Luke adds rather ominously at the end that the devil finally left until another opportune time. The struggle is very real indeed, and the struggle is not over yet. In the first temptation, the devil says, if you were the chosen one, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus refuses. It is written, he says, people do not live by bread alone. This is the temptation to prove one's identity. If you are the chosen one. Theologian Henry Nouwen calls this the temptation to be relevant, to fill some need, to be appreciated by people. It goes to our deeply felt suspicion that we have little value, little of value to offer others. We believe that we are called to help people that we should be productive, successful, and efficient. Proclaiming good news is one thing, but we feel compelled to do so in a way that that gets results, in a way that is relevant and respectable. The illusion is that that who we are can be identified with what we produce, with the visible results, with tangible outcomes. When Jesus says people do not live by bread alone, he is not saying that bread is insignificant. Jesus fed multitudes of hungry people and frequently enjoyed a good meal himself. But he knew that bread is always a gift from God, given so that we will trust ourselves completely to God. The challenge is to let God shape and reshape us. When we give up the need to be relevant, to get tangible results, or to be appreciated for all our efforts, then we can be free and fearless people. Our identity is established not through our own compulsive efforts, but by the God who calls us and loves us unconditionally and without reservation. The second temptation Henry Nouwen calls the temptation to acquire power. The devil showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and said, I will give you their glory and all their authority. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. But Jesus again quotes scripture. Worship the Lord your God and serve only God. In our culture, no one really thinks twice about the quest for greater power. Because as Nowen points out, We've been told that wanting power and wanting to be of service are exactly the same thing. We don't believe that anything good can be done without power. When we feel secure enough and in control enough, then we will be able to accomplish some good deeds. The illusion that needs to be pierced here is that our life is our own, to do with as we see fit. You must worship the Lord your God and serve God alone. Behind this imperative is an indicative. Behind the ought is a simple fact. Power and glory do not belong to the devil. They are not his to give. God alone can empower us to serve our neighbors. The third temptation, Henry Nouwen calls the temptation to be spectacular. The devil took Jesus to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the chosen one, 
Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, God will command the angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus refuses, quoting the scriptural command not to put God to the test. This is the temptation to clever manipulation. Do something sensational to force God to respond and in the process, force people to believe. For religious types, this is a serious temptation. We gauge the quality of a worship service or a study group by the number of people who attend. We feel that we have been effective when we get noticed, preferably with TV coverage. To be unknown, unspectacular, hidden, that is surely a sign of failure. Successful people are always those who are seen and praised and liked and accepted. Henry Nouwen reminds us that it is difficult for us to believe that something very good can come from an unknown place. It is difficult for us to believe that our God is a God who came in an unspectacular form of a servant, who entered Jerusalem on a donkey and who was killed as a common criminal. And it's even more difficult to believe that a few unsophisticated fisher folk brought God's good news to the world. Behind the temptation to be spectacular is a deep-seated anxiety about our own acceptance. When we recognize that our need for notoriety and visibility is an illusion, we can return to the reality that God forgives us and loves us as we are. When we return to that affirming presence, we can put aside our fears and be free to serve and love others. Our communion with God and with one another can be reestablished. In all these temptations, Jesus is able to resist the devil because he recognizes illusions as illusions. He knows that one does not have to be relevant, powerful, or spectacular to be whole or to act rightly. One only has to respond to the truth. One only has to listen to the word of God. Thus, Jesus responds to illusion in a strange way. He repeatedly and consistently quotes scripture. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer has pointed out, the temptation of Jesus should not be seen as a, the struggle of a heroic individual against the powers of evil. When Jesus confronts Satan, he does so without personal strength, without the companionship of God or of any human being. He confronts Satan only with the word of God and the promise of God and not with any personal strength. It is the word of God that disempowers Satan. So the bright sadness or sad brightness of Lent has to do with letting go of cherished illusions or having them crumble before our eyes even before we are ready to let them go. Illusions are hard to give up. The sadness must not be suppressed or denied, but the brightness is there as well. It is the brightness of relying on God's presence and God's love and God's sustaining and life-giving word. 
Amen. And thanks be to God who makes it so. Let us join together in prayer. Faithful God, we praise you that you love us and that you have come to us in Jesus to reconcile the world to yourself. We thank you that Jesus walked the path of obedience all the way to the cross and that you raised Jesus up to draw us to yourself. Jesus handed himself over to death, knowing that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will not bear fruit. Teach us, like Jesus, to hand ourselves over in love to you, for one another and for all people. As we who have been baptized into Jesus Christ enter into the life of the world, May we die with Christ, that we may also rise with Christ. May we take part in your world of suffering and redeeming love, lifting up the oppressed, 
binding the brokenhearted, challenging the powerful, drawing all into community of love. We lift up our prayers for the world, still so full of suffering, still so shadowed by crosses, knowing that you have loved your creation from the beginning. We join our hearts with yours in love for the world, that we offering ourselves to you, that we, we may offer ourselves to you, through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Through the grace of God, we have gifts in abundance, and we pour them out like perfume from a flask, not for our own sakes, but to worship the one who lavishes love on the world. Let us now receive our morning offering. <laughs> Let us pray. These, your gifts, O God, are returned for glory. Bless us with wisdom to use them as you would have us to, and bless our lives with courage to do your bidding. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lent is a season of turning, turning from what is hurtful and toward what is healing, turning from what is shattered and toward what is whole, returning to God who welcomes us with open arms. Wishing you a holy and blessed Lent. Here is the table of the Lord Jesus. We are gathered at this supper, a foretaste of things eternal. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the God we love. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. When our ancestors were slaves in Egypt, strangers in the land, you saw our suffering, heard our cries, and came to deliver us, bringing us out of captivity into a land flowing with milk and honey. So joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful in every time and place, we glorify you joining this unending song. may be seated. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Tested for 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus taught us to seek nourishment in your word, to worship and serve you alone, and to commit our lives to your providence and protection. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. And so we recall that on the night of betrayal and desertion, the light of the world took bread, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Here is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in like manner, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and, after giving thanks, gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in, for the remembrance of With life's greatest feast before us, we joyfully proclaim, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. 
by your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with your Church in all the world. Put your word of faith on our lips and in our hearts, so that we may confess that Jesus Christ, the Lord, is risen from the dead. Save us when we call upon your name. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you are in need of a communion set, you can raise your hand and we'll bring one to you. Just a reminder to peel the top layer carefully to um, reveal the wafer, and then uh, later peel the second layer to reveal the grape juice. gifts of God to the people of God. Receive them in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us join together in closing thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior,
presence of the Spirit, now and forever. 